Metallica 1 was sold 10 times more they can down the most selling Megadeth record. And Dave Mustaine himself admitted that it was this mental race. He was not satisfied because there's always more success happening around Metallica. He was like, I'm also having lots of money. Why should I still pursue this, this phantom enemy, while I'm pretty well off already? It's like if we both got Ferrari, but they got a newer model, or my dick was smaller. And speaking of the feud between Megadeth and Metallica, even though it kinda ended 30 years ago, Dave announced it himself. 10 years of bullshit is over between Megadeth and Metallica. And there's a lot of assholes that said this would never, ever happen. But I guess we all proved them wrong, huh? To this day, it still comes up, time of the time. Do you kind of see it as like publicly burying the hatchet with Metallica? With me, the hatchet was buried a long time ago. Are you gonna go on stage with Metallica tonight? No. All right, well, let's move on then. Did that come about? Did you actually know about the film? We finished the video for it about a week ago, right before we came over here to do that. And in my opinion, the 90s were the decades of Megadeth in the big four. The 80s was the close race, everyone was pumping out music, that was the scheme. You made an album, you go on tour, and next year, or maximum two years, you make another record. And so on. That was the pace of the 80s. As they say in Russian, Kui железо пока горячо. That's because of the sheer quantity. We have some quality. But then the 90s came, and Metallica released basically two and a half albums. Metallica did not... did much music in the 90s. That's why I cannot say that they ruled the decade, even though they still were the most commercially successful band in the big four. While Megadeth managed to do five albums, and for the overall body of work that Megadeth did in the 90s, I said that was their decade. Just for the record, I consider the 2000s the decade of Slayer, and 2010s the decade of Anthrax. But among the reasons why still Megadeth did not replicate the success. Firstly, you have to be in the right time, in the right place to make it happen. You cannot predict it. Metallica just had everything in the right place and the right time. And they had the right trajectory to lead up to the Black Album huge success. They have done just about everything picture perfect. They were first to write a ballad. They were first to break into MTV and Grammy Awards. And as Dave Allison said that everyone was, was kind of suffering in the 90s, this crisis of identity. And Metallica kind of slipped through that because they were so ahead of everyone. So they were like a glider through the decades. Despite all the bad stuff, all the controversies that happened on the way to Metallica. The other band though, including the Magnus, had to put a lot more work to stay afloat. Even though that was still a money-grabbing decade. And besides paving the way for the other bands, like being the first to have the major label deal and so on, Metallica were also the first to take the hit. That was the 80s. Heavy metal was to blame for all the bad stuff that happened in the world. And bands who were in the spotlight, they got the biggest blows. And besides being criticized, they were also ridiculed. Like they were not taken serious. And in some way it still continues to this day. Heavy metal remains the genre for the outsiders, for the weirdos, for the fucking losers. That's our tribe. <laughs> and so Metallica might have cautioned the way for the thrash metal bands, they came after them. Pioneers get most of the gold, but they pay more blood for it. But still, except the right time and place, something that would objectively hinder Firstly, something that I was never having problem with, but a lot of people have Dave's voice. Some people cannot stand it, and that's why it may have interfered with the growing of their popularity to a larger audience. Like Metallica did, James Hetfield's voice suited everyone. He could pull off a wide variety of songs, from crazy treasures like Fight Fire with Fire to to ballads. All these words I don't sing and that's the next point. Only Metallica managed to create their reputation as the masters of ballads. Not least thanks to James's voice and poetry skills. And that he was fond of creating clean riffs. Back in the room, it's much too real. Dave 
On the other hand, only occasionally had this inspiration to create softer songs. The more seriously I took things. And again, his voice was not that fit for this kind of subgenre, power ballads. Although we have a couple of really good melodic songs with Megadeth, but it, it did not become the tradition, something that we associate Megadeth with. And ballads, by default, they facilitate sales, facilitate breaking into radio and television and merely playing somewhere in the park just grab an acoustic and play that dun 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 that's how it spreads and Megadeth had few stuff that would follow this path of self-promotion I think that the world could stand to learn a lot from Metallica let's not forget that Dave receives royalties from Metallica and pretty solid royalties Dave Ellison told the story in his book that once in 1989 he had some money problems and Dave Mustaine backed him up he handed him one of his royalty checks from Metallica for five thousand dollars one of the checks that was before the 90s imagine how much money did Mustaine get from Metallica in the 90s when millions of fans got to buy and kill them all and ride the lightning my success is based uh, partially on the doors that they've opened for a song and partially on me being the ex metallica guy now a lot of it has to do with my own songwriting but i can't deny the fact that a lot of it has to do with them nowadays it's definitely not the right time to replicate that success even metallica cannot do that because that was a wave the metallica managed to write and Megadeth, we cannot blame Dave Mustaine for being lazy. He's such a fucking working guy. He made pretty badass music. Voice and ballads and right time and place. Well, there might be many more reasons, uh, write them in the comments, but the fourth one I would point out that bands who have stable lineup and stable relationships within the band, they have more chance for success and longevity. Because when you have to change members every fucking album, that does not facilitate the creative process. You have to start all over again. It's like a train that has to stop on every station instead of just going at full speed all the way through. And those come the first. So Metallica were lucky to, to have sort of stable lineup for most of their history. While Megadeth had it only twice and the Nighters were one of those two periods. The classic lineup. Dave, Dave, Martin, Nick. And that was the golden age for making money in music. And that's why Megadeth were on the peak in the 90s. And on top of that, when you are the boss of the band, when you are responsible for most of the stuff in it, including the songwriting process, instead of having a teammate that could back you up, compensate for your weaknesses. Like in Metallica, James gives riffs, Lars creates the composition. Although in Megadeth it was still a democracy, although strict, kind of authoritarian, but everyone still could contribute riffs and lyrics and titles. And when you are writing songs alone, you might be spreading too thin in making the entire record and you might not have enough energy, creative power to make every song a masterpiece. So having a stable team, that helps. But what do you think? What stood in the way of Megadeth to create their 10 million sales album? 